The law caught up with billionaire Jeff Gregg today as FBI agents escorted him from his exclusive New York penthouse. Gregg will be arraigned tomorrow on nine counts of conspiracy, fraud, and complicity in the death of Under Secretary of Defense Michael Bergstrom. An FBI spokesperson attributes a surprising arrest to a transmission sent over the internet by an Angela Bennett, a program systems analyst from Los Angeles. In other news, San Francisco police are investigating two mysterious deaths at the Pan Pacific Computer Convention. A young woman found shot to death in a backroom area has been identified as 28-year-old Ruth Marks. The other deceased, a male in his 30s, is as yet unidentified. Turning now to weather, the forecast for the... We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Mozart's ghost is what I refer to as uh, an orgasm. I'm yeah. excited to report when my balls drop on air. I've seen bits and pieces of it, mostly at nursing homes. The Praetorian back door is what I call my asshole. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. The the greater good. Nice. And we just got sued by AOL. Perfect. I love it. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You guys remember AOL, Jeff? That was was nice. We had a listener who would email us. Yeah, he would email us with an AO, a dot AOL account, and I just we just loved him for it, and it was amazing. Oh my goodness, good stuff! It good is kid. good stuff. Um, what are we doing here? Oh my gosh, tonight, boy, that was a really great intro, Sam. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank That's, you. Thank this you. I do my best. Yeah, you do your best, and even when you're not at home, we'll get to that in just a second. <laughs> yeah, this is episode three hundred and eighty-seven, and tonight we're talking about the net, the net. Not a net, but the net. I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight is Andrew, flies his airplanes without ever looking out the windows. Jimison. <laughs> Isn't that how you're supposed to fly your plane? I- I've never been through pilot training. I don't know, but it feels like that's wrong. I mean, why do planes even have windows? Like They should just be flying submarines. Do we not? We don't care where the horizon is. I mean... And also, like, isn't that why tall structures have lights on them, is so that you can see them at night? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to talk about that plane crash. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk <laughs> about it real soon. <laughs> Joining me also is Sam. I understand hacking the GPS, but are all of the instruments on that Cessna accessible to the internet vector? Apparently it's wireless is they had wireless way back then too on, on all that. But, uh, but Sean, yeah. just so you know, I have, uh, I have hacked into your mainframe I have a and mainframe. I, I have stolen all of the porn off of your computer and have, uh, and have sent it to your wife. So <laughs> that's how I'm killing you. This, this is this 2003. This like do people actually keep porn on their computer? I just, I just watch it online. Like every other person. Is that right? You don't have a, you don't have a folder that says personal files on there? I really don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, true story. I got to tell this real quick. When I was when I was in seventh grade, I got my first computer, internet for the first time, right? Mm. Uh, I had a file because no one in the house knew how to use the computer except me. My parents didn't even know how to turn the thing on. <laughs> and so I had a little folder on the computer screen that said, uh, like, personal files, or it said, like, I don't know what it was, but it was something like that. I came home from school one day and my mom said, we got to have a talk. (laughs) And that was the end of the computer being in my room. (laughs) She found it. Yeah, she did. Nice (laughs) personal files. You got to do better than that. You got to put that in a subfolder somewhere else. Through Well, now I know. (laughs) Through through multiple hops and seven routers at Berkeley. Okay, exactly. and making his Cheap Seat Reviews debut is Jason is rapidly hitting the escape key to crash our podcast from the Binge Movies podcast. 
That's right. You have been virused, as this movie says. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you have a virus. You have been virused. Virused. I'm sorry. It was, I was a bit delayed in my response there because I'm busy um, trying to get rid of this personal file off of my computer. <laughs> 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 uh, does not want to delete. Oh, no. <laughs> password I think, protected. I think I'm going to start going up to people that have had, that I know that have had COVID and just say, you've been virused. You've been virused. I have been virused. <laughs> you have right? been virused. You know, what's interesting, though, is I talk about porn. I talk about this movie. Ghost is what I refer to as uh, an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. A ghost indeed. Oh my yeah. gosh. Mozart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that might be the title of our episode. Right there, right off the bat, we're uh, we're off to the races. I love it. Uh, Jason, it's so good to have you on our show, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I, it's an honor to be here. Um, most people do refer to it as the Binge Movies Podcast, um, as opposed to the Binge Movies Experience or the Binge Movies Zine. I thought about starting the zine. Uh, for our Patreon members. So I, I might do that, but we are, in fact, a podcast. We're talking about movies. It's a novelty to hear a white man talk about movies on the internet these days. So sure. I'm just doing my part. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you can't just throw a rock and hit 17 of us, right? That's exactly right. I think I think that diversity is very, very important, and there's just not enough 30-something-year-old white men <laughs> with movie podcasts. Well, for what there. it's worth, Sam is in his 40s, and I'm five minutes away from 40. So at yeah. least we'll break into the next bracket of 40-somethings. Andrew's yeah. got like another decade to go before he's there. But well, you, you, this uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but this show's been around for, what, uh, 15 years? Isn't this the beginning? Didn't it start off as an internet radio show? And <laughs> we, we, we I was still recording. prepubescent. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. We we were putting audio files on pottery back in the day. <laughs> so, Wax cylinders. This is the yeah. first podcast that was actually began in hieroglyphic form. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first podcast that started off in black and white. Yeah. Oh my god. You had gosh. to carry us around on tablets. Yeah. This was a, yeah. This, yeah, it used to be a silent podcast and then it became a talkie. Yeah, it became a talkie. <laughs> It was so great. In fact, what we would do is just like we would, I would actually just, you know, send people to neighborhoods to just yell our movie reviews. And that was how they got it. Yeah. Town criers. They were cheap seat criers. Yeah. 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 Cheap seat criers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They carried just a real shitty chair with them and just got sat there. Really expensive, really fast, too. Yeah. So, it did. Yeah. 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 I, I, I love it. We, we, when Ted Turner wanted to colorize this podcast, I was, I was against it, but. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is amazing, man. You uh <laughs> boy, you have brought in it today, sir. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we've uh we've been around for like uh 8 years, right? Which is yeah, here's the crazy so. thing. All right? This is legit crazy. So when I uh messaged you on Twitter to to make this work out, which was like legit back in October, which is how yeah. busy you are. Yes, um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. yes. Um I realized that I had sent you a hey, thanks for following us message back in like 2015. Yeah, I've been around <laughs> a while myself too. Yes. Yeah. So, which was kind of funny. It's like uh, when it pulled up, it goes, Oh, I've, I've already messaged you. And it said, <laughs> Welcome, like literally, thanks for following in 2015 or something like that. And I thought, if I only knew then that you could ask other podcasters to be on your podcast, <laughs> you know, we, I, I, I could have, we could have had this conversation seven years ago. So. Now, look, I know this is a podcast of tangents. I've listened to several episodes. So if you don't mind, I'd like to go on a tangent here just real quick. By all means, this is your dime. What your listeners don't know, some of them, some of them may if they're in the podcast space, uh, but what a lot of your listeners may not know is that the average podcast, okay, there's mil literally millions starting every day, mm -hmm. uh, but the average podcast only releases nine episodes in its lifetime. And the average podcast has an accumulative 26 listeners per month. <laughs> so if you have been producing, what is this, episode 350, what? 87, 387. 80, oh, I'm sorry, 387 <laughs> episodes. And more than 26 people a month are listening. You are now in the upper echelons. You're in, I think, I believe the correct number is top 25%. 
of all podcasts in the world. Too bad that doesn't mean quality. <laughs> there was, and I, Jason, I'm being very serious. There was a, a period, once we hit about 150 episodes, yeah. I, I jokingly said, and not jokingly very much, it was more like a kind of a joke, but not really. Should we change our slogan from for the greater good to qu- uh, quantity is better than quality? <laughs> because i mean once More, you like again at 100 and, quantity, yeah. at 150 like that was blowing away like almost every podcast i knew except for like yeah. the two that i listened to yeah and so like now it's just funny whenever i post on twitter like yeah we've been doing this for eight years and we're about to release episodes like like it, it almost comes across as like we're this elder statesman or whatever and we're, we're not <laughs> it, at all you know but you are i the mean the point is that most podcasts uh flop because podcasts are really hard to do, and the and the entry level is getting lower and lower, so more people are getting into it, which is good and bad. And uh, so, if you hang in there and actually continuously produce content, and your feed is continuously active and has been for eight years, it's an accomplishment. So, yeah. congratulations to all of you, and including uh, Andrew, who was just but a wee fetus when the show began. Andrew, <laughs> I'd like to thank you uh, for. Being the the young one on the podcast and bringing some yeah. youth, bringing some well, some cool factor here. I'm excited to report when my balls drop on air. <laughs> it, <laughs> if your voice is this deep and they're still up there, can you imagine <laughs> how deep your voice is going to be? It's be blowing some speakers. There is a uh, career in ASMR, through. fetish audio <laughs> for you, sir. For the for well, there's a whole I'm, deep voice community uh, appreciation society out there. Well, Trust thank me, you. I, I do. I do lick my microphone occasionally. Just <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, there's. I can hear the clink of the ice in your glass. You're seducing <laughs> me as we speak. <laughs> For, All right. So you can tell we are we are absolutely excited to talk about our movie tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. We're we're 16 <laughs> minutes into this podcast, and the only reference to what we're watching <laughs> is the fact that I said the name of the movie. Uh, like even yeah. the opening clip gives you zero clues to what we're watching because there oh was nothing gosh. interesting to pull from this movie to put <laughs> at the intro. Uh, Nor look, is I there anything. I don't, get, I don't get an opportunity to be in the midst of three strapping young men such as yourselves very often. So excuse me while my eyes dart and wander across across the uh, platform <laughs> here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Andrew started something and I'm intent on finishing it. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just grinning from ear to ear that you called us young men. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying. Well, yeah. I mean, we've established that at least one of you is. So, uh, yeah. Well, that's true. Just just the one. Uh, I, I'm so I'm sorry. My thirst. Uh, Andrew's a thirst trap. I just keep going down that rabbit <laughs> hole. Let's get to the movie. <laughs> yeah, we don't really have to. Um, no. Okay, we are. All right. So the net 1995. The net. Starring uh, Sandra Bullock uh, and some other people. Uh, this was really fun to me. Uh, this is going to be my little mini tangent. Uh, so you teased out a while ago, like a month ago, that you were going to be on the show. And so I thought this will be fun to c- you know, continue the tease. And so I said, we're going to be doing a movie that stars an actor that won both an Oscar and a Razzie co-stars an actor that was on MNF, and that was what I used, the words, the letters MNF, and uh, features an awful lot of bad tech. Mm -hmm. And MNF confused so many of uh, my Twitter interaction people, including a couple of guys that I know are listening to the show, Jesse and Cam, I love you both, but they could not figure out that that meant Monday Night Football for a little while. And that Dennis Miller was in fact on Monday Night Football for about five minutes. Oh, I I mm-hmm. thought that meant midnight. Yeah. Oh God, jeez. <laughs> uh, Mark, once again, <laughs> Andrew not appreciating the fact that I have so much extra stuff to do. Oh, oh I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's fine. I'm only doing a second co- uh, podcast competition. You know, it's fine. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> You see what I mean, folks? You see what he's putting out there that I'm just supposed to ignore? Yeah. The signals are clear. <laughs> it's a good thing that there's about 600 miles separating you two right now. It's um... <laughs> The tension in this podcast right now. Oh, my gosh. 
It's great. Yeah. Okay, so back to the movie. Uh, the, I feel like that's what my job is going to be this episode, just to like bring us back to the movie. Get us back to the movie. Yeah, yeah, even though I'm kind of one of the ones that don't really want to talk about it. But Jason, you picked this movie, so we have you to blame. Oh, really? I was given a list of options. And <laughs> <laughs> my God, what else was on that list? I, well, I know, right? <laughs> I don't want to pull the curtain back too far. No, we, everybody was, knows I do that. It was not a great list. <laughs> <laughs> this was the, this was, we don't have to get into the, I, the, the what, but this was the one where I was like, well, hmm. and then, then I, then I watched again. I just watched this not that long ago. And oh, uh, dude, yeah. glutton for punishment. Well, see, the first time I watched it, I watched it with uh, somebody who is really funny and smart. And so they just had me laughing, uh, but I did, I did have a headache by the end of it. I did. I was getting just pissed, but I, so I remembered it being kind of funny. Then I watched it again in the cold, cold light of day alone, just by myself, <laughs> utterly alone. And I realized that everything I thought was funny about the movie was somebody else's comments that were outside the movie. And that the movie itself is a horrible, boring flop failure. Oh man, it's <laughs> and is there is not review? much to extricate from the film. I mean, we could get into it. I one of my listen, when one of the highlights of the movie is when a character who's not really a character, but he's kind of in the prologue, the cold open, he sits down, calls his wife, and he says, Yeah, I just need a little field trip to clear my head. And then blows his brains out. So clear my head is a euf euphemism for a gunshot to the head. Uh, when that's the highlight of the movie and you wish you were going with him, you know you're in for it. <laughs> that's a field trip I would be willing to take before I'd be willing to watch the net uh, again. Uh, okay, just to set the record straight, not you know because not that I need to defend myself, but the list that I did give him was Tomorrow's War, Jolt, Planet of the Apes and the Net, and then I said, "But if you would like to do something different, we can do that too." And you said, "Let's do the Net." So, just yeah, not a great plan. Okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, yeah, what you so what you said was, "Here's a list of of junk." If you'd like to do my job for me, yeah. go ahead and tell me a good movie. <laughs> well, and because the I'm your guest, you ought to be giving me good options. Well, <laughs> you, you 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 found one of what? I, there's you know one of the very few movies where Sandy Bullock is more like Sandra Bullock. Do you get it? She's the shits in this. She sucks. And yeah, she's yeah. a the thing is at this point in her career, she's coming off of speed. She's got charisma for days. One of the all time great. Uh, 90s actresses and uh, here she's playing somebody who is what is she coded for agoraphobic is she coded for nerd is she what is she coded for here because at one point we have a digitized voice telling her that the net is the ultimate condom and um, I, I'm, I'm to believe that even in 1995 Sandra Bullock being on the internet there, there were wouldn't be men just throwing themselves at her and also, the fact that she's working in cybersecurity at all in 1995, there are no women in cybersecurity in 2022, for God's sake. <laughs> Not that there shouldn't be, but it's it's notoriously a boys bad. club. Yeah. It's bad. So yep. I, I don't I don't the, know, man. I, I'm sorry, I'm ranting already. I gotta say, but I'm sorry. the only the only trope they didn't lean into is to make her wear glasses to look her a little bit less hot. Oh, well, and, then yeah, and then take them off when she's trying to dress up. Well, right? because well, she never dresses up. The only time she's hot is when she's in the bikini on the beach, and I mean that was enjoyable. But yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, she's Sandra Bullock, so she was kind of hot the whole time. But yeah. the character has no charisma. This this character, Angela, her only she mumbles. personality. Yeah, she mumbles throughout this whole movie. Her and only personality mm. is everybody telling her, you're the best, Angela. You're a genius, Angela. That beginning scene where she's going through Wolfenstein 3D and he, she goes, click, 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 click. You've been virused. His response is, <laughs> you're the best, Angela. Presumably, he already knew he'd been virused because why did he send her the game? I'm sorry. That's why fine. did he send her the, the, <laughs> the game in the first place, Sean? <laughs> that's, not, that's not what you heard. That's what job is that? Hey, I... Something's wrong with this. Well, it's a virus. Thanks. You're a genius. 
here's your money. It's like a scene from the room. You're my favorite customer. Like what? It's uh, it's just hack screenwriting. It's just, it's the worst. This is the worst. And then the guy repeats, you're the best, Angela. You're a genius, Angela, 15 times. And that sort of dialogue only exists to tell computer illiterate people in 1995 that Angela is real good at computer stuff. So Exactly. Well, she was, this movie is she rife was, with that. It was written for my mom. Who didn't know how to turn on the computer, but yeah, uh, my files. Well, uh, yeah, this uh, this movie was aimed at. I'm not saying like at my parents, but probably our parents in 1995. I mean, we had. Yeah. I mean, we had. I honestly, I had a Performa Series Mac in 1995 in our house, and so even watching this back then, like I knew the operating system that she was using. Like I knew all of that stuff, but then when they start getting it and. You've, we've all heard the term techno babble. Um, mm-hmm, I actually have mm-hmm. a clip of techno babble, but I labeled it tech no babble. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, it, it, Jason, just to just to <laughs> you know show the disdain that we that that's happening here on this podcast. I'm on vacation, <laughs> and and Sean Sean texts me Whoops. earlier today, or, or maybe even last night. I'm not but sure. He says, was, hey. I, I, I see that you, you can get internet out at out your RV. You know, you think you could join us for the, the, the show this week? And and I'm like, oh, man. Okay. All right. Well, it can't be that bad, right? I watched the net this afternoon at my campsite, and I wanted to throw the TV into the water. <laughs> I, 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 and and I, this, Sean owes me at least an hour and 20 minutes of my life back. So just, just so you know, uh, okay. he owes you an hour forty four. I think that's forty four or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah it's okay. almost two hours. That's the other thing that <laughs> I, look. I like nineties. <laughs> I like nineties thrillers. I like nineties thrillers. Okay, <laughs> I like them ironically, and I like them uh, actually. Like some of them are actually good. Some of them mm-hmm. are kind of ironically good. They're just kind of can't be fun now in retrospect. But almost all of them are an hour, uh, 90 minutes. They're an hour and 30 minutes. They're very tight. They, there's a conspiracy. It gets to the point, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this movie goes on uh, 15, 20 minutes past the time that it should. It cannot decide what it actually wants the climax of its plot to be. Uh, because is it about, is it like the game where her, which would come later, but is that her identity has been erased? Is that the main thrust of the movie? Is it like, what is it? Is it this, this, uh, sleeping with the enemy style subplot? Is it, what, what is it? What is this movie ultimately about? And ultimately it's about this lady who finds a floppy disc with a website on it. Now that sounds insane to people that <laughs> a, a web, a, a, a three and a half inch floppy disc had 1.44 megabytes of memory. The entire, this random band had their entire website on one floppy disk. And then when you clicked on like shows, which is the only reason a band would have a website, it somehow on the disk took you into the mainframe <laughs> of the government. <laughs> they put a website, a non live website <laughs> onto a disk. She inserts the disk, searches the disk and goes to the DOD. How does that work? I I always took it as yeah. um okay. So <laughs> I feel like I have to defend myself. First of all, okay, <laughs> hang in there. And I am First I am all, I love the net. No, 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 no. I am all for <laughs> shitting all over this film. This is partly of what this podcast is for is to have fun. We have done good movies recently and it's been great. We've done The Lord of the Rings and the Kingsman, yep. which is a fine film. I am okay to have some bad movies every now and then for the podcast. It, I think it's also kind of fun for our listeners. I'm sure if they're laughing as much as I am, then we're all having a good time. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's all that matters. Which is really kind of all that matters. Secondly, yes, I do have a weird affinity for this movie back in the day, but but having you know, watched it for this viewing... This is a this has not aged well at all. I mean, no, it's, it it's, has not. It did so, not hold up. It is so bad that we are now thirty minutes into the podcast. None of us have done a five word review, and I'm afraid Jason is just going to lose his shit and actually try to virus me. So, <laughs> so there's all that stuff. Um, but I always kind of took the disc as a 
bad, badder version. I'm going to use bad English because it's a bad movie and they use bad English. A badder version of sneakers where they had this device that you can interface with and that thing acted as the key. So I always took that, that uh, Beethoven's ghost was like the code was on the disc. It wasn't a website. I know the, 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 the purpose was a website, but like, like the key was un, in there embedded, right? Is that yeah. what it's supposed yeah. to be? Right. I or mean, they I... just refer to it as a website. She's like, I'm on this. I'm looking at this website right now. What are you telling me? And she's like, click this, click shows or something. He's like, yeah. see the pie symbol on the click that. And it's like, but that, that's a, that's the, what is she looking at? I guess the, I guess the, the, the real question is, and I, I'm with you. The real question is, is that if the Praetorian, um, back door is so blatantly obvious that if you were to go to the DOD website and just click on the pie symbol, which again, that's not a back door, that's a front effing window, right? then then why would it be on their website? Like, why do they yeah. need to back door into the concert listings of Beethoven's Ghost? So just so that we're all clear, uh, Dorian back door is what I call my asshole. Nice. <laughs> I'm not. I'm gonna have to extend our intro music like a minute to get all these gems in here because uh, this is between I'm Andrews. You, that, that's an invitation if I've ever heard one. Yeah, between uh, <laughs> Andrews' uh, balls comment and now his uh, ass. Um, this is great. Oh. Speaking of uh, speaking of well, Andrews, I, ho- hold on, Sam. You know what's hold on, Sam. We're yeah. here. We have to stay here. Speaking okay. of Andrews' balls, balls. Check one balls. <laughs> There you go. And people <laughs> listening at home have no idea if Andrew just said that or not. They don't know. It's true. Yeah. That's people true. at home cannot see Andrew. I have the luxury of seeing him, as I've said before. Yeah. As he pours himself another drink, I can see that he's got a very well manicured beard situation going on, which <laughs> leads me to believe that he is a manscaped user. I don't know if they're a sponsor <laughs> of this program or not, but. If anybody Maybe they should, would, be. should yeah. be, yeah. If anybody would like to uh, get a lawnmower 4.0, talk to Andrew. Follow him on Twitter. He can hook you up with the promo code Balls, and he can <laughs> save 20 percent on your first Manscaped order. <laughs> lawnmower 4.0. I'm telling you, that's right. Oh. I'm gonna have to reach out to them. For now, some, now uh, we definitely need to get a sponsorship. Oh, not just for your front lawn, by the way. Yeah. All right. Let's do <laughs> five words. Praetorian Guard as well. <laughs> It's actually one of the names of when you have a razor, you have a guard that you put on it. And that's one of it's the Praetorian Guard. From tip to taint, you are safe with the Praetorian Guard. Oh. That commercial just writes itself. Oh my gosh. They also oh have the Swiss gosh. Guard, which is um not, you know, it's not as uh, strong as the Praetorian Guard. And, that's uh, right. And then the right guard only does half of your balls or something. I don't know. If you uh, want to increase the amount of Mozart's ghosts in your life, get a lawnmower 4.0 with a Praetorian guard. That's right. What every podcast needs to have a sponsorship that's a bundled package of Blue Chew and Manscaped. Why those two uh, groups have not joined forces, I don't know. Blue Ooh. Chew, of course, uh, I don't have to say for you, Sean, what Blue Chew is. You seem like an active user of it. Yeah. Uh, and then there's, you know, Manscaped, and that's what puts you on the map. And I just, I just look. I brought you ad revenue right here, man. Oh, <laughs> you, dude, you you have increased and, our, uh, our our ad revenue a thousand percent, which was was zero. So even if yeah. you get, you know, a dollar, it's an improvement. It is. Yeah. I'm a real pro. I go above and beyond. I didn't do a five word review, Sean. I did a four word review. The internet is bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thesis of this movie. Well, well, I was, yeah. well, yeah. Remember when in 1995, the internet was this, this strange new world that was coming and that, you know, this movie was you know, supposed to make you scared of the possibility of what it could do. And now, I mean, do we even hesitate? to jump on a, a Wi-Fi of an RV resort that, uh, <laughs> that is called Hester's bottoms, you know, in the middle of South Carolina. Yeah. So, <laughs> tell tell you something. And you're just broadcasting your signal everywhere. It's great. That's right. Uh, this, this is the, this, you know, there's a lot of unexpected things that have happened on this podcast. One of them is the amount of knowledgeable bottoms that are on the show. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, speaking of five word reviews, Sam, you want to give yours? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I, hopefully I didn't delete them here. All right. Uh, I got two. Um, I've got time capsule of bad tech. Nice. And Sandra can't float this wreck. Oh, nice. And, uh, it, I, 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 I'm, it's pretty obvious what I feel about this movie. And, uh, I still don't understand the sound. Help me out with the sound, Opie, because the sound, it felt like they were mumbling, but it was like under the volume was not quite up or, or something. It it felt like a lifetime movie is what it felt like. Now, and I don't know if it was sound or what, but it just, can I, can I, I ask a legit, what they trying to do a legit question because Normally, you watch the movies either in your office at, at work where you have your headphones on or at home with your sound system. But tonight, yep. you watched it on your little flat TV in your camper. Is it possible yep. those speakers are just terrible? I mean, I guess it's always possible. Because I, because um, you mentioned that earlier today, and I, I had zero issues with, I mean, of all of the things that I had issues with in this movie, the sound design was not one of them. Interesting. It, well, it, hmm. The only reason I ask is is mainly because it it sounds fine when I'm watching anything else. The sound sounds good no matter what. Could be a Netflix thing. So, yeah, yeah. Could be a bad transfer. I don't okay. Know. Yeah, I don't know. You could have been virused. You could have been. Yeah, your camp, I was probably virused. Your camper's yeah. been yeah. virused. <laughs> what you got, Andrew? Well, I have a couple here. Uh, this is a two parter, by the way. So it's. You know, like 10-ish Ten words, words okay. with some contractions, <laughs> but nobody's cool. counting. Technology doesn't work that way. Wait, movies don't work this way. <laughs> <laughs> that's number one. Oh, that was uh, one. Okay. Yeah. Number two, well, that didn't age well. <laughs> uh, this is just a train wreck from start to finish, and... Looking back now, it, this was like this was the reason that a lot of Southern Baptist preachers said that the internet was the Antichrist when it was first <laughs> introduced, um, because this just this movie makes you think. If you know nothing about the internet, you you think that your entire life is just gone, uh, and and that's still the reason that some people won't use credit cards. I know people they won't put their credit cards online. I get it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's their their prerogative. It's their life, but I feel like they probably watched this movie at some point in their lifetime. Um, you know, it just it's a it's bad tech all throughout, uh, and, and tech like I said, technology does not work that way. Uh, all the things that we've already discussed about the you know the floppy disks and and all the material that was on it and being able to wipe out an entire system by hitting that escape key. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't mean to jump ahead, but when they see the, you're hitting the escape key, it's virusing the entire mainframe. We're going <laughs> to lose everything. Everything's being lost. That was the dialogue from the uh, oh, I, fake Angela. And I died laughing at some of the dialogue. In this movie. Um, yeah, it's terrible. Not only that, but there was just some some stupid movie making uh, that the dialogue itself was bad, but then we have things like this crazy, stupid close-ups of Devlin's face. Yes. Uh, we go eyes. All right. Now mouth. All right. Camera one, camera yes. two yes. in on the mouth <laughs> in on the eyes. They're comedy cuts. Uh, <laughs> then we get, Oh, you're cold here. Take my handkerchief, wrap it around, not your face or your head. Let's put it around your midriff. Right where you already have some clothing, that he has a warm. jacket on. By the way, yeah, exactly. Well, he's got the uh, gun in there. He can't, you know. We oh, have true. to find that I later. Have, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, th this movie has the worst crashes imaginable. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sandy plane bullets on the rocks. When yeah, the plane is the horrible. <laughs> and then we get <laughs> the, plane. the little dinghy. Yes, you, 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 you hop in this you hop in this life raft who you're gonna you're gonna save yourself from this madman and straight, literally three feet in cliff. front of you <laughs> which okay was that raft made of explodium like the, three feet in front of her is this giant boulder which yeah okay 
she crashes into it. All right, that's bad enough. Devlin must be a complete idiot if he can't find her after she crashes. So somehow she escapes and wakes up in this hospital, uh, and he didn't see where she went. Uh, So, okay. Uh, Let's see. The guy, the creepy guy who Devlin hires to help him on the island in Cozumel. There's a scene where he's just creepily standing in the bushes staring at them. (laughs) Like any stalker, bad stalker would be. And then my last problem. She asked this dude. uh, What's his name? Bob. Cyber Bob. Mm, Yeah. To meet her. In a public place, <laughs> yeah. so we could be safer. But let's do it at midnight. Let's do it at eleven thirty at night when it's pitch black. Surely the darkness will not uh, <laughs> not help us. Uh, there are so many you know. cuts and scenes in this movie. You just outlined a few that are the shot choices and the editing style actually lends itself more towards spoof or comedy, but it's yes. not intentional. Yeah. Yep. Uh, up to and including when she's supposed to meet Cyber Bob at a local carnival, and uh, somebody the else shows up. Yeah, well, we'll get oh, there. Devlin's <laughs> like, "I'm sorry, Bob can't make it," and then um, they're just walking out after a carousel shootout. Which Amer- you know, there were so many carousel shootouts in the '90s. I don't know why we got fascinated with that as a culture, but we did. And this is a movie that has it. Um, but he ends up getting her, and he's going to walk her out and, and take her on to, to kill her or to get the disc or whatever it is that he wants. And then a random furry, a random mascot, a guy in a bunny suit. <laughs> Why is that guy at a carnival to begin with? He's probably a pervert. Only perverts go to carnivals <laughs> in a rabbit suit. Uh, trust me, I know. That's how I spend my weekends. But like- He's in a rabbit suit. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere... He's doing something. He jumps in front of Devlin and starts dancing and dry humping him. That is, <laughs> it's a Deus Ex Furry. It is the first time a fetish saved the day. Fetishes wow. normally ruin your life. Yeah. First don't time in a movie. Save your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Life well, I was going to ask you, Sean. You used to work at an amusement park. Yeah. You're not allowed. People in those costumes. <laughs> Are not allowed to touch people. You are not right? allowed to touch people. I mean, that was the first thing my wife and I watched this as we as I always force her to make you know to do. And that was Oh, your poor wife. Uh, oh yeah. Come on. Don't well, do that she was there. doing she was doing like other like real things. Um, but she uh she, that was the first thing she said. She was like, Oh, that guy's getting fired. And I was like, Yeah, <laughs> you cannot do that. Um nope. but you're right. Uh would you call it Deus ex furry? Um yes. Yeah, we we I, we use that trope all the time. Is uh, I would have probably said uh, rabbit ex machina, but yeah, same thing. Um, well, uh, in my religion, rabbits are gods. So, oh, that's cool. That's a it, my trinity is the guy in a rabbit suit <laughs> humping another guy. Sure, <laughs> it's a mystery. We can't explain it. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's but a, but that, that just that just goes to show how bad the writing in this thing is, right? It, it's. It just for happened. a a costume rabbit happened. to cause her to was, to be able to escape. That's did, just dumb. Did she know who Cyber Bob was? Like, what was she like? We didn't no. see a message saying wear a white handkerchief or put a. You know what I'm saying like, well, that's when the computer your shut down. Is right when he was going to say, or right when there was, you know, I'll be wearing, and then the computer shut down. Oh, I yeah. missed, how did I miss that? I was probably typing this movie sucks or something. I don't know. Yeah, the only introduction I was, you know, go ahead. Sorry. A, a smarter uh, scriptwriter would have had Bob in that costume, <laughs> or would have had somehow Bob come and help save the day and be the goofy computer nerd that we all know from the '90s, right? Yeah, yeah. Did anybody else forget that Dennis Miller was a thing? <laughs> I remember that he in was life in, this. Or in this movie. I forgot no, he dies. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't seen him. Literally since this movie, I think it's the last time I saw him on, on the uh, screen. Yeah, well, he got fired from M and F, right? He did because he was too smart for the for the audience. Yeah, I mean, it's just what it came down to. He was using, you know, language that people couldn't understand. Like they had gotten so used to 
John Madden saying stuff like, boom, and then the team with the most points at the end wins. You know, like they, they went from that to him him breaking down the Wall Street Journal on air. Just he didn't last. But Sean, I we're learning that. we're learning a lot about you tonight. This is my first appearance here. These guys know you very well, <laughs> lifelong friends. I've learned that you love the net. I love I've learned that you love Dennis Miller. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you have very strange religious beliefs about bunnies. <laughs> That whole, that, that whole Trinity metaphor you threw out there, it just went right over my head. I'm not sure how that yep. got brought back towards me, but that's fine. <laughs> I've been accused of way worse things on this podcast. This is America, Sean. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Freedom that's right, buddy. No judgment. Yeah, no yeah, judgment. None from us. No, that's no, fine. Yeah. Not tonight. We'll just go back to the tape. Um, who, who hasn't done a five review? Just me? Oh, my God. You. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just did the one, and I, it actually is five words because I follow the rules. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> uh, bad tech meets cute nerd. So there, you uh, go. Okay. there it is. Um, yeah, like okay. So we've all been kind of running down our list of things that just really drove us crazy about this movie. Um, I kind of have a a weird rule, Jason. It's not a weird rule. It's just a a thing that happens. If I take a lot of notes, that usually means I didn't like the movie. And if I take few notes, it means I usually enjoyed it because it means I'm watching. Uh, mm, I, I yeah. took a lot of notes for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I took a lot of notes. Like, internet pizza ordering in 1995. I worked at Domino's Pizza in 08, and that barely worked. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was a forward-thinking film. It I was mean, ahead of its time. I mean, in that one, in that one instance, yes, that is correct. Um, but otherwise... But you had to insert your floppy disk to get the toppings that you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I went was, pepperoni. It, well, each floppy disk could only contain one topping. Yeah, exactly. So you had exactly. the pepperoni disk, then you had to eject it, then you had to put the... Extra yeah, cheese so. or the anchovies, right? Yeah. She did anchovies. Good Lord. What? Yeah. yeah. She's a psycho. Speaking of psycho, she kills more people in this movie than Devlin does. Yeah. You know? At, at a certain point, yeah. she's an innocent woman caught up in a conspiracy has nothing to do with her, and then she just starts murdering people. I mean, and gets off scot free. She just there is no consequence to yeah. just murder at a giant, giant convention. Yeah, she kills. So yeah. she she kills Devlin, who, by the way, as an assassin man, is really terrible. He literally tells uh, the <laughs> other Angela, "Go in that door over there," and then he sees her and then shoots her. I think. <laughs> You are the worst <laughs> bad guy in the history of bad guys. I don't understand how you've been this successful. Like, like if you're not <laughs> Angela, no, I'm not Angela. I'm the girl that you sent over here five minutes ago. Remember? Oh yeah. Okay, we'll go over there. I just that whole scene is terrible. Like that whole thing is terrible. Yeah. And then she yeah. kills him with a uh, with a a fire extinguisher and then landing on. Uh, a forklift, which that hurt my back just watching. Oof, but yeah, mm, mm -hmm. that was um that thing. Uh, let's see. Jack Devlin is a cool bad guy name. Let's see. Uh, oh, back when you can smoke in the movies. I can't do that now. Uh, oh, here's a trope. I need to um, I need to cut a part of my body to show something. So I'm gonna cut the softest, most fragile part of my body, and that's the palm of my hand. I. Cut an That's arm. not the softest. You know what I'm saying. You're not going to show her your, her your your doodle. Well, he would eventually, but like you didn't know that in the moment. But like, like a baby's bottom. You don't just cut the palm of your hand. You're going to need that. Like if you're going to plan on killing her later, that might be a I don't know a sore moment. It just it's so dumb. I hate that trope. It's so so lame. Um, let's see. Wow, well, he also he killed her before or he slept with her before he killed her. I mean, I get it, but like still, it's kind of a whatever. Uh, let's see. Bad product placement for Nissan. <laughs> uh, people are really bad at seeing things in the dark. Just scrolling through a couple of these dumb notes here before we get into um, our next segment here. Let's see. I forgot that they killed him. Like I, I understand that the movie's telling us that everything is in the internet, right? And that, but I. Uh, I guess one of my other problems is like, yeah, I understand that nurses also are overworked. We live in a time during the pandemic where nurses are just overwhelmed with, you know, everything and you just want to hug every one of them you see and buy them a steak dinner because their life is, their job is hard. But in this movie, these women had like one job. And so she literally says out loud, he's allergic to a thing. And then five minutes later, he's dead 
Well, the computer said it's because we were treating him for diabetes. It's like, wait, you literally said out loud it was for sort of something else. Could you not remember that? I just... Uh, yep. These people suck. Yep. Everybody sucks. And then again, to your point, no consequences. She breaks a computer monitor, which back then, those things were expensive. <laughs> and for a hospital, I mean, those, uh, that, I mean, that's like $600 right there that she just smashed on the floor, if not more. Um... Let's see who else. What else? What else? What else? Uh, Angela. Oh, all, how also how dickish. I mean, I know these are bad guys, but the fake Angela takes Dale's desk. Like, <laughs> can we rewind that for a second? Yeah. Another yeah. one of the funniest lines in the movie is when the boss calls. It's like Angela, you know, uh, looking for a promotion. Want to come back in the office, Angela? And she's like, "What are you talking about?" It's like, "Well, oh God, I thought somebody would have told you." Well, now that Dale's dead, we're, we're down a person. We're going to need you to come in. The way that he reveals to her that this guy died on the way to see her is so <laughs> cold. And again, it's almost, it sounds comedic the way he's delivering it, but it's supposed to be this heartfelt moment. And you were talking about tropes. One of the tropes that drives me insane in movies is the hacker, hacker man. Mm -hmm. They always edit yep. criminal records in real time. Yeah. Just as the police are going to look at the record, oh, we got to edit it real quick. Right. Presumably, they would have already have done that. If they're going to make her Ruth Marks and make her this criminal person, wouldn't that have already had been done as part of the global cabal conspiracy to ruin her life? And also, when the baddie at the end, the fake Angela, dies, the news refers to her as Ruth Marks. So do they only have one name that they use as an alias for women? <laughs> yeah. Or is that they actually swap their identities <laughs> and she really was the real Ruth Marks. They just couldn't come up with a name. Either way, it's stupid. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. no, you're not wrong. I mean, yeah, doing it in. If you're going to. Okay. Did you, Jason, have you ever seen the TV show Leverage? Bits and pieces of it, mostly at nursing homes. So I, I, I love. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I missed the bit. <laughs> I, was, I was preparing my thought. I missed the punchline. Oh, I feel bad. No, that's okay. Go, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll go back and listen to it and see where you made fun of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't tell him right now. Yeah, no, it's fine. No, don't. Make a note. It's better. It is much better this way. No, it is. It's a lot better. Um, the listeners are laughing. I have no idea what's happening. Uh, let's see. 51 minutes. Sean is punchline. Okay. You are not the punchline. You'll no, find no, out no. when you listen to it. No, okay. no. no. So the TV show Leverage, they do this trope a bunch, but that show is lighthearted and kind of silly, so it you don't care. Because yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Like cuz the show is it's a show where the bad guy always gets his, his come up and the good guys always win. You know, it's just one of those lighthearted. It's like the TV show Psych, right? Like there's a murder yeah, every week, gotcha. but no one's in real danger. You know, like bad guys point guns at Sean all the time and he just kind of farts his way out of the situation. It's the same thing. Um, well, like to your point though, that's like context and tone, right? Yeah. So in a movie or a TV show where it's like, yeah, it's escapist fun. Like I, a great example is like the mission impossible movies, right? I really like those movies. Yeah. They do the exact same thing. Oh, you know, just as Ethan is getting past the scanners, they have to change his identity. Like, uh, but it's, yeah. it, it, it is, it's become almost a comedic trope within those movies. Now they're just doing it to play for comedy. Simon Pegg, something goes wrong. This and that's happening. It adds fun to an action sequence. The stakes are relatively low. That's not the case in this movie. No. Yeah. The, all the stakes are wrapped around them ruining her identity. And this is supposed to be super serious. And it is, uh, it's just asinine. It's just so, it's so frustrating to watch. Yeah. Especially I think there is probably like the, even in 1995 and you guys may disagree. I think you probably could have done a decent movie about this kind of idea. Um, because identity theft and fraud and uh, us going more and more online and this kind of new, you know, our identities being vulnerable. Like that's still a thing that's relevant today, obviously. Um, and then, like a few years later, Enemy of the State would come out and do oh, a that really, really good job with some of these ideas. Yeah, yeah. Three, so, three years later, only three years after this, Enemy of the State came well, out. Well, came out again. A movie I reference, and I will reference every time I get an opportunity to, is Sneakers. Sneakers does this thing. There is identity theft point. in that yep. movie, yep. and that movie is before this movie, and they do it so much better. Yep. And 
Um, so what also, went wrong? I mean, honestly, Sean, uh, uh, Adam, Sam, what went wrong here? Why? Uh, Andrew. What's, what's, what happened? <laughs> Andrew, sorry. And he's also been called worse on this show. Um, oh, is it the director? Right is the more more the the answer. I think. Uh, you know, I, I think the actors phoned it in. I think the writing. I don't think they did their research with the writing. Well, and, and that's it was the lazy. Thing. Yeah, so many times we run into movies where they're making a movie about a topic that they don't know what they're talking about, mm. and they don't know who to pull in to learn about what they need to talk about, or they only pull in certain certain people for a certain amount of money and so they only get a certain amount of information in order to write their script or they misunderstand i mean a lot of things can happen when writing a script and i think that they there was a lot of miscommunication there was a lot of misinterpretation uh when it came to understanding that or just downright guessing so one of the writers i'm just looking on imdb here uh, if we want to point some fingers i'm all for that john barunk Brankato, Brank Ato. Boy, I can't say his name. Brankato. How about that? Whatever. Uh, he has written such movies as, let's see, he did something called The Femme Fatale in 91. He did The Interceptor in 92. He did this movie. He did one episode of Aeon Flux, the anime. He wrote The Game with uh, Michael Douglas. So then he repurposed that because the whole I'm trapped in Mexico and I got to f- sign documents that aren't mine to get out of the country. Yeah. Spoilers. That's the central conceit of the game. That happens in the middle of that movie. He also It's done, mu- it's done much better in the game too. Uh, he also wrote the screenplay uh, for Catwoman 04. That's the Halle Berry Oof. thing. Uh, he did something called The Net 2.0, which was, uh, I guess... Uh, but he also wrote mm. Terminator Salvation, which I actually liked that Terminator one. The Salvation is with Christian Bale, and it's kind of... Oh, where like, he yells at the uh, the guy getting in his eyes. Yeah, he yells yeah. at the DP, yeah, yeah, or the gaffer, yeah. Um, That's when we found out he was a giant dick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we might have known. He, well, he also wrote Terminator 3, which is a bad one. But then he did Terminator Salvation, which I liked. I know some people don't like it, but I like it fine. And then he wrote Surrogates, which I think is kind of a neat idea. Um, surrogates. It's like we all have robot avatars that go do the job so that we can stay safely in our homes and our little pods and whatever. It's kind of a neat idea, probably based on a book or something. It's kind of what I do. Uh, actually, that's what we everybody does kind of right now. We just don't yeah. have the robot yeah. parts. But, well, maybe we do. I don't know. I, I don't. Um, I don't have a job where I can do that. I have to go into work, but that's fine. But, yeah, on this, uh, the other writer kind of did the same stuff. Oh, they're a pair. They're a team. They've all done the exact same stuff. Mediocre science fiction is what we're yeah. saying. Like, the only yeah. thing that he did differently is he did uh, Dead Rising Endgame, and um, he did something called The Hunter's Prayer. So, anyway, those are your writers. I think it comes down to writing and directing. I think there's some bad director choices. Um, yep. And we're going to hear some here in just a second with some clips, but yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else before I play some clips? Go for it. Do I it. have, a, I just have one final question. Yeah. The theme song from the official soundtrack of the net is called a whiter shade of pale. That's and that, my, that, that was, song um, is by Annie Lennox. Yeah. It's about me. <laughs> is it Lennox? Because of the system Linux. Is that the only reason why they picked it? Because I'm just trying to figure out why that's, what the hell, that song, this lazily sort of sleepy romantic song has to do with this tech thriller. It's the weirdest pairing of the end title song. And it's at the beginning of the movie as well. And a movie I've ever seen in the 90s. It's so strange. Yeah, it, it's very jarring. Um, by the way, IMDb, I think you're drunk. Um, this movie is credited with two awards. Uh, it won the Yoga Award for Worst Foreign Actress for Sandra Bullock for the movie While You Were Sleeping. Sorry, I'll, I'll stop typing now. And then <laughs> it won a Jupiter Award for best, for best International Actress, Sandra Bullock, for A Time to Kill. 
Wait a minute. You're changing the Nets trivia in real time. Yeah. I'm awesome. virusing it. You're virusing He's hacking. <laughs> he's hacked IMDB, and he's changing it in real time. That's great. Oh, we should call somebody. We got to call Amazon. Get him. Get him on the. You know, on the thing. All right. Time for some, some clippy clips. All right. There's. This is some good stuff. Okay. Uh, again, again, brought to you. Brought to you by Manscaped. By Manscaping the Praetorian Guard, uh, and Andrew's Taint. All right, here we go. <laughs> Rosie, I'm sorry if you listen to this one. I'm sorry. Oh, but, poor Rosie. Yeah, you're the best. I apologize. It's Jason's fault. Blame him. Okay, here we go. Clip number one. Okay. I didn't catch that just because having the text be read to you in a chat room is terrible and the, the <laughs> text is awful, mm-hmm. but the net is the ultimate condom is a fallacy. If you're saying people aren't having sex, a condom would infer that you are having sex. Yes. The yes. what he should say is the the net is the um ultimate cock block. The ultimate <laughs> I was gonna say uh <laughs> the, the net is uh abstinence, but cock block is sure. Yeah. <laughs> Rosie. Sorry. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's fine. That's fine. I don't know. Can you say that? I guess you can. Cock block? You yeah, we yeah. Andrew has said worse tonight. We're fine. That's true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Rosie, I don't know who you are, so I don't really owe you an apology. Uh, but these guys are apologizing, so uh, I will apologize as well. Rosie is know. one of our one of our awesome <laughs> listeners. She lives out in California. Yep. She was in the movie Serenity. Um and uh and t- in fact today she posted pictures with her and Alan Tudyk um hanging out because today was his nice. birthday. Was his birthday. Oh, uh, but she nice. wore our t shirt, the Cheap Seat Reviews t shirt at Comic Con this past year. It's like the, and said, the this greatest is a honor good, someone could do. Yeah. Good, clean Christian podcast that we want to put out there. She, I think she actually told people to avoid this. This was like a warning sign kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. She said, she see I mean, this shirt, look at it closely. Don't watch. Don't, don't listen, listen to, to these podcast. guys. Don't, don't do I it. I came on and within 20 minutes, Sean was her be, espousing heresies and I was so doing good. perverted lingo and st- I'm so sorry, Rosie. Yeah. So sorry. All right. Um, <laughs> I captured this one because... Sandra Bullock says a word incorrectly, and no one thought to get a better take. So here we go. Butch. Beautiful. Brilliant. I'm sorry, <laughs> what? I didn't catch Billions? that. Billion? 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 Oh, he's got to be billion. I'm going to play it again. Just enjoy this. Brilliant. Really? Should it be brilliant? Yeah. I guess. No one said the sound guy didn't go, hey, she didn't say that word right. Just hey, script supervisor, the, the brilliant, right? Brilliant? Yeah. Can you say brilliant? Like that's his job or her. It's her job. Also, that's butch. Her word. Butch is an interesting term to use for a man. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Butch. Butch is I don't really think of that much anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. You don't think I, of the words butch and, and beautiful was, in the same sentence. She was <laughs> yeah, really butch, beautiful and brilliant. A dude wrote that, right? Yeah. A dude wrote that for a woman seeking another woman. But uh, <laughs> that is another issue that I have is like you were saying, Sean, that we have, because this is the internet and because uh, we have to make the internet dynamic, we have to make computers dynamic in movies because they're really boring. It's very boring just to watch somebody type and then read and then type. So it's text to speech, which digitized voices, which did not exist. I don't think in the nineties for chat rooms. And then she has to read every syllable she types out so that we, the audience knows what she's, so we know what she's writing. And so there's so many scenes in the first quarter of this movie where it's just her painstakingly saying what she's typing (laughs) and then some voice being like, you know, Internet is ultimate condom. Oh, and then you you're mean, just like, you mean they say something like this? Face it, Angel. You're dreaming. You're one of us. We accept you. We accept her. You're one of us. One of us. Ugh, so creepy. That's creepy. That's yeah. I think it's a callback to freaks, right? One of us. One of us. One of us. It has to be. Right. It has to be. Because <laughs> yeah. if she feels the idea there, see, is that she feels like a freak because then she she slinks back from her desk 
and she puts her head down. And she goes, I know. Like, that's the problem. The problem with her is that she's one of them, one of the unwashed nerds of the internet. Yeah. But she's Sandra Bullock, and she's not even wearing glasses. <laughs> it, it is kind of weird because you're right. And I didn't pick up on it this time watching it um, because I wasn't paying attention close enough except listening to her say words badly. But you're right. The fact that she kind of is like is bummed out about this. It's like, you live in this life. You chose this path to be isolated from the world. You can't be mad when the nerds online want you to be one of them. Like, mm-hmm. you, like yeah. you can't be, I'm bummed out I'm not Miss Popular when you never leave the house. So Well, that's like the whole point, right, is that she's so obsessed with the internet and her job and tech that you could erase her from the real world and nobody would notice. Right. And that's supposed to lead us to be like, oh, one day we're going to be so obsessed with the internet that somebody could erase us and no one would notice. And instead, today, you don't get canceled in real life uh, through the internet. You get canceled on the internet for things that you do uh, in real life. So it's actually yeah. become the reverse. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Uh, I have another clip that I don't re- really know why I picked it, other than it just it kind of annoyed me. So uh, here we go. I'll tell you who I am. I'm Captain Goddamn America meets Albert Schweitzer. That's who I am. Isn't that what you always wanted? Yeah, it is. I remember. It was um, butch, beautiful, brilliant. Spends all day dashing into the fray. All right, I'm not going to play anymore. This is terrible. But he actually used the word brilliant, which is kind of annoying. Because if you're going to repeat what she said, then you have to say the way she did it. And that was not the, way she, that's not the way she said it. Uh, Sam, I captured this one solely for you. Okay? Do, okay. You, know, do you know what it's going to be? No. Andrew? Why would I pick no, a clip, clip just for Sam? Here we go. Yeah, I've gone there. Go. Clever girl. Oh Clever yes, girl. I, I did. I did catch that actually. Clever girl. Yeah. I forgot that was in here. The line's kind of overdubbed. Like it's it's yeah. it's bad uh, ADR because he says it over the line of the other guy, so you can't really hear it clearly. But yeah, again, that's that's bad editing. I was probably bad. choking myself out at that point, so I um, probably missed it. Here's um, out sessions. <laughs> uh, here's Dennis Miller uh, also saying words badly, and no one said we should take another take of this. Tell me who you think you are. Oh, Christ, you're not even listening oh, to I me. Oh, I am listening, but come on. Somebody stole your purse. Stole? Someone stole your purse? <laughs> why Why are we supposed to feel bad for him? He was her psychologist. Her this therapist. Is so, this is something we skipped over, yeah. Uh, go, go ahead. Can you, can you just d- describe to me again, make sure I have this right in my notes, what the relationship between them was? Uh, what, I, what I understood was that he was her therapist and he was married. Mm-hmm. And they had an affair, which is wrong on a thousand different fronts. So I, I, I'm sorry when he kicked the bucket, I didn't feel bad for him. Yeah, because like I said at the beginning, they kind of code her as if maybe she's mentally ill because she's like this recluse. And mm-hmm. he constantly is saying like, oh, you're crazy. I've always thought you were crazy. What a nut you are. So That's something uh, a therapist tells their, their clients. <laughs> right? I mean <laughs> – Again, sloppy writing. Just yeah. really sloppy writing. So he not only is it an abuse of power, not not to get like serious for a second, but like this is a plot point of the film, right? Not only is he exploiting his position of authority, he's potentially exploiting a mentally ill, actively mentally ill person. <laughs> Apparently, she's so mentally ill that when she comes to him with this is what's being done to me, his first assumption that's paranoid delusions, which would mm-hmm. mean that she's like actively psychotic. At that moment, and he still wants to sleep with her, so he's trying to seduce her and ply her with alcohol in a hotel when he <laughs> believes that she's actively psychotic. Well, and, and we're supposed to care that he died. This is not presented as a bad guy. This is presented as a charming potential yep. romantic lead. Yeah, bizarre. Who's, who's, yeah, I mean, because so like, weird. Like one of the first lines he says is, "She's like." Do you have the computer? He goes, yeah, I'm wearing it. She goes, seriously, do you have it? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, oh, fine. Let's go get it and go to a hotel. Now you're talking. It's like, really? Put it back in your pants, Miller. Good gracious. All right, <laughs> last one. Here's my tech no babble. Someone's on. I think it's our go. Whoever it is is covering their tracks big time. A dozen hops so far. A pop in Switzerland, a little Unix box in the University of Montana, five different routers at Berkeley. They know what they're doing. What is a pop? 
I, I, under, I understand the other words. What's a pop? I don't know what that is. Yeah, again, again I think this is bad writing. Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> people it's, making it's, up jargon that they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, oh, router. That's a real thing. Okay, yeah, router. Well, there's there's no security in that. It's just a router. I mean, like, I have, if you're on, anyway, it's fine. It's fine. It's bad. Uh, it's bad. Okay. Um, yeah. Time for this. And now for some more bad news. Ready? Time So, time for our trivia game. We're going to try to go through this quickly. I have a, a random number generator. So, Sam is going to be playing for... I got to count through my... Uh, so, the random number was 13. So, that's going to be... One, two, three... Uh, the <laughs> uh, it's going to be the Invasion of the Remake. I laughed because it was almost going to be the Wheel of Horror podcast who was on last week. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> you're playing for Invasion Remake at Invasion Remake. Um, so that's uh, so that's Sam. That's who you're playing for. And then okay. Jason, I'm going to do another R in RNG here. Number six. Jason's going to be playing for one, two, three, four, five, six. The Blood and Black Rum Podcast. I play for the people, but uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Andrew. All right. Are we ready? Here we go. Did you notice? At the beginning of the film. Well, hold on. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Who's... Let's give the uh, let's give the uh, the instructions here. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's your game. All right. So uh, since you're our guest, uh, Jason, you're going to go first, and then if you don't know the answer, it'll go to Sam, and Sam can still, and then we'll swap back and forth. Are we good? Yep. Perfect. We're good. All right. Here we go. That awkward silence was brought to you by Manscaped. At the beginning of the film, Angela orders a large, regular crust pizza from Pizza.net. One of the toppings is anchovies. What are the other two? The other two? Holy yeah. crap. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, this is not trivia. This is granular detail to exploit and make fun of me online. <laughs> yes. So, this is just terrible. Um... Blood and Black Rum Podcast. I'm sorry, you will not be winning a prize this week because I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Sam, you got a guess? Um, I I would guess she she already put um what's it, what is it on it again? Anchovies. 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 Um, uh, how about uh, garlic and extra cheese? That's exactly right. Ha! He, he knew wow. that. He knew that. He feigned like he didn't know that. He knew, it. <laughs> he knew that he was now these, giggling while he was feigning that he didn't know. And he was like, ah. My, those, these figures are typing quick, I'll tell you that, Mark. <laughs> right, that's, uh, that's a I'm point calling, for Sam. I'm calling All right, so question, question number two. Before, and this, uh, oh, wait, this, this goes to me. Yeah. yeah, this goes to Sam. Before Angela can go to the police, Devlin changes her criminal history and adds priors to her record. She has two mm-hmm. counts of prostitution. Mm-hmm. And narcotics possession; those are listed on the warrant for her arrest. What are the other two that are added to her criminal record? There's a par- there's a parole violation, and um, uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I speeding. I don't know. All right, to you, Jason. Jason, you got a guess? Oh, is is was that wrong or is yeah, it- that's wrong. I can't say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she definitely did. I believe she definitely did have a parole violation. It was like, and then I think the other one was like larceny, maybe? Yes, correct. Nice. Yeah. Petty larceny. Yep. All right. So we're tied here neck and neck. So, Jason, this one goes to you. At Cathedral, as Angela is searching for her impersonator, she pulls up a layout of the workstations in the room. What is the yeah. workstation label? She selects where the fake Angela is working. Oh my god! I will give you a hint. It is three numbers and a letter, not necessarily in that order. I know it's th- well, shit. I know it's th- uh, three letter uh, uh, numbers, but I don't. I don't remember letters. So I'm not going to get this, but I think it's like five twelve or five thirteen A, something like that. I'm going to say five twelve A. I'm going to say five twelve A. All right, Sam. Do you have a guess? 
Sam, uh, are you there? His, his head, his controller's probably whatever. Sam gets the point. Wasn't it like it was like E? Oh, he's gone. E something, right? E one one two. Uh, well, uh, Jason is, I'll say, very close. Sam, are you back with us? Do you have yes, a guess? Yes, I am back. Yeah. Okay. I was eight well, A one one two, but I I do have I have no. No, so, uh, so Jason, you're very close. It was five E twelve. Dang it! Wow! Yeah, wow! I'm I, that should uh, at least a half a point. <laughs> okay, we can say half a point. Sure. All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. so Jason's in the lead here. Question number three. We go to Sam. Uh, to get Alan out of the picture, they replace his pills with penicillin, which he was allergic to. What type of medication is supposed to be in his pill bottle? Um, a, 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 a anaphylactic pills. I don't know. Um, meth. How about how about the blue pill? Sure. All right, <laughs> Jason, we go to you. Antihistamines. It is antihistamines. Oh, yes. that's right. It should have been blue chew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think right, Jason has a strong lead he, here. Yeah, he's already mathematically won, but we can keep going. And yeah. the last question: uh, As Devlin takes Angela to his boat, he opens the drawer to get a clip from a gun. Magazine. In the drawer. Uh, excuse me. Yes, a magazine for a gun. <laughs> In the drawer, uh, there, there are two packs of Newport cigarettes, keys for the boat, a lighter, sunglasses, and two other items. What Ooh. were the two other items? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, forget, I'm on vacation. I was not paying that close <laughs> attention to this movie. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Is it Sam's turn? No, I it's, it's yours. yours. You, you've already won, but the, yeah, go for it. What else is in there? Um, one I know for sure. The other one I need to take a guess. Um, so uh, I don't want to. I don't to take too much time. So um, the one I know for sure is it was a lawnmower 1.0 because this was the 90s. Uh, personal <laughs> men's rumor. And um, <laughs> the second one was a, a Gideon's Bible. <laughs> Was it a was it a flare? What's that? No, oh, a not a flare. No, not a flare. Sam, do you have a guess? Uh, a fork and a knife, an ice cream scoop, and a bottle opener. Nice. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> By the way, great job, Blood and Black yes. uh, and Rum Podcast. You guys are going to be getting uh, some stickers and some other cool little little thingies. Um, congratulations! Congratulations! Good job, Jason. Um, that was great. Um, by the way, for an international assassin man, there's zero chance that he does not realize that the magazine is not in that pistol. That's a yeah. third of the weight yeah. of the gun. The weight. Uh -huh. Yep. I, it's yep. just so stupid. Oh, my gosh. Where's the clip? Where's the clip? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, my gosh. You suck. All right. Do you uh, think he puts the ice cream scoop under warm water before he puts it into his ice cream, He's a though? douche. He probably doesn't. Yeah, no. he's like, this, this ice cream scoop just, isn't working. You got to heat it up it. first, folks. Yeah. You got to heat it up first. He probably uses the gun to heat it up. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Excuse me while I whip this out. Top three. We're going to run through some top three. Uh, we had some really great answers on Twitter, which unfortunately we don't have time to get through because we don't. Uh, but um, we got some really awesome ones on Twitter. Uh, so our top three this evening was, I just titled it Scary Tech. Uh, so, like, I, I'm using that in the context that, like, in 1995, we didn't understand the tech, so it was scary. Um, but I'm letting the, the, the door be wide open for whatever interpretation of scary technology you want to use, I'm down for. Uh, so, Jason being our guest, I will let you go first. Do you want me to give them all three, or do we yeah, like yeah. to give my... my okay, yeah, all no, three. Coming in number three is Virtuosity, SID 6.7. Listen, man, the only thing scarier than Russell Crowe is a thin Russell Crowe <laughs> with <laughs> tweezed eyebrows in 90s oversized suits with the minds of several serial killers coming out of a virtual reality system 
somehow made of like snake eggs and glass eating nanobites <laughs> chasing a one-armed Denzel Washington through the future of, I don't know, 2002, whatever it was supposed to be. Yeah. He is terrifying. He is terrifying. He is terrifying. It scared me. Coming number two is a movie not many people have heard of, but it's called Circuitry Man. And in particular, Vernon Wells playing Plughead. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google circuitry men, Google plughead. Just imagine pinhead, but instead of pins, it's ports. And he has plugs for his computer that go into his brain so he can read your thoughts. It's a post-apocalyptic film. Everybody's living underground. And it is, uh, by and large, uh, like a, kind of a quasi-inspiration for The Matrix, I want to say, among many <laughs> other kind of post-apocalyptic things. Uh, it's not a very good movie, though. And finally... Uh, my the, the the absolute scariest uh, tech movie ever is You've Got Mail, uh, a <laughs> giant mega corporation puts a lowly independent bookstore support local. No, delete local. Get rid of it. Virus it. Get rid of it. Buy it out. Her mom lived there. They trolled around. The mom's dead. What do I care? Get rid of it. F O X. That spells Fox. Among, I can't say what I want to say in a PG-13 podcast. But the point is, again, this is the original catfish. Uh, wow. Tom Hanks gets as close as he possibly can to Meg Ryan in real life, learns all of her wants and needs in real life and online, plays both sides against the middle, puts a woman in a business, still gets her in the end because of gaslighting. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I never thought of it that way. Never saw that coming at all. Uh, I am both baffled and amazed and slightly aroused. Sam. <laughs> All right. I, I didn't quite, I didn't do as much homework on mine, uh, but I will say my number three has to be Hal from, uh, or Hal 9000 mm -hmm. from uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Um, computer of... that can shut you out to space. My number two is going to be the robots from iRobot. Yeah. Yeah, Vicky. Um, they're, they're kind of scary there. And uh, my number one has to be uh, Jurassic Park and, and yeah. all the dinosaurs. Just the dinosaurs are a product of technology. Run amok. Yeah. 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 That's that's a time where your, your Jurassic Park connection actually yes. really, really works. Because <laughs> <laughs> usually they I'll don't. I'll take it. They usually don't. My number, my top three. Um, uh, my number one, I, of course, had to do a Star Trek connection. So I'm going to say Star Trek First Contact, which is Borg. That's literally people and technology, like, merge together. They're cyborgs. They're trying to take over the universe. Number two, Enemy of the State. Um, okay, yeah. There's some bad things in that movie, but I still love it. I don't care. If the, the spiritual successor of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care that the, uh, that the computer can hypothesize what's on the other side of your bag in 3D rendering. Uh, it's still a fun movie with Will Smith saying fun things. And my number one, as always and forever, will be Sneakers. I love that movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's just a just a great movie, and I want to go watch it and get this shite how, out of my brain. How many of you guys have practiced doing the sneaker scene where you had to walk as slow as possible to, to not set off the motion sensor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah but, but for me, it's the creaking of the floors in the house so that I don't wake people up as I'm eating in the middle of the night. I, yeah. I, I actually legit, um, in my last job at UNC Charlotte, we had, um, you know, motion sensor cameras and I would see, <laughs> I would put the camera on, on my computer, my monitor and see if I could <laughs> leave the office without it detecting the movement. <laughs> and I did it a couple of times. It's kind of creepy. Andrew, yeah. Andrew, what do you got for your top three? All right. Uh, I've got an honorable mention of the uh, Mission Impossible original with the masks. Uh, oh, yeah. Because you, you never know who, who anyone could be. Real life uh, deepfake. Yeah, yeah. Number three, I have the Men in Black light flashy thingy. Neat. And the memory eraser. Right? Have you ever flashy thingy me? Uh, yeah. Uh, number two, I have the uh, the 2022 The Batman he has these contact lenses. Sonic. Spoiler, if you haven't seen it. Uh, Which, sorry, Sam. Sam that uh, the uh, contact lenses uh, actually record everything he sees. And if you think about that, that's kind of scary technology. And uh, that's not really a spoiler. But uh, number one, wow. I have the 2017 Blade Runner 2049 because of the holographic sex. Uh, if that were a thing, I don't know that I would go out in the daylight. <laughs> and there we are. 
That's it. Very cool. Time for our Twitter. Okay, Twitter. You guys were all over it. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, let's see. At D.W. Lundberg says 2001. Sure. The Terminator. And just for shits and giggles, Electric Dreams. Electric Dreams. That's cool. Um, E. Bunny 06. Ebony. Good friend of the show, Ebony, who has a really awesome podcast called Two, The Twosome Gruesome Podcast. No, gosh. Sorry, Ebony. Gruesome Twosome Podcast. Check them out. Uh, it's a good horror podcast to talk about horror movies and things. Uh, Ebony says, Videodrome, Pulse, 2001, and Possessor. Possessor. I have seen none of those movies, but that's not surprising. Uh, let's see. Cameron from Green Shirt Podcast, a newbie's trek through TNG, says, Total Recall, AI, and Superman 3. Um, I've never seen Superman 3 because... I heard they were all kind of terrible uh, after the second one. I like one and two. I don't think I saw the other ones. Measuring the score at measuring the score or at measure the score podcast is Ghost in the Machine, Virus, and The Pulse, the 1988 film. So we've got Pulse 2001 and Pulse 1988 competing. There you go. Jason at Nerd Rovert, Nerd Rovert. Oh, nice. Nerd Overt. That's cool. Jason. Jason says, Minority Report, The Terminator, and The Fly. Uh, Lady Juan, good friend of the show, Lady Juan, who is awesome, says, uh, um, uh, Smart House, uh, something called Smart House. It's a DCOM, not theater release, direct to video, I guess. I guess that's what it means. Uh, Smart House put the a fear of AI. Um, it's the one where Katie Seagal plays Pat, the AI of a smart home, and she gets possessive of the film and goes crazy in the form of a 50s sitcom mom. So, yeah, that does sound kind of scary. I don't want any part of that. Ugh, geez. Uh, let's see what else we got. Jeremy Bryant at, at Juggalo Bastard. Okay. <laughs> it says Terminator War Games, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. So, that's pretty cool. Um,. Any other ones? Last one here is good friend of the show, Jesse. So Jesse and Cameron have started a new podcast called Open Pike Night. So at Open Pike, and I'm going to tell you what they are in just a second. They are, uh, let's see, Jesse gave me this read. Our old friends at the, at the new, what? Our old friends at the new Star Trek podcast, Open Pike Night, submitted the following answers. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, the one with the whales. Star Trek uh, the First Contact, one with the Borg. And Star Trek 09, the one with the red matter. That's the red matter stuff. Um, and then feel free to call out that list as incredibly self-serving. Well, yeah, because you're a Star Trek podcast. That's fine. Uh, and then he also says, um, so the... If you'd like to share your thoughts, jokes, questions, or concerns about Star Trek Strange New Worlds, download Open Pike Night immediately following cheap seat reviews. And then he says, you're the effing man, sir. Uh, so Jesse has a new show called Open Pike Night. It's going to be kind of a, 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 an homage to, to the new Strange New Worlds podcast. I suggest you go download and listen to it because uh, Jesse and Cam are awesome and you know, I'm not at all, you know, hurt that they made a Star Trek podcast without me. Of course, I joke. I have zero time. I wouldn't have been able to do it even if I wanted to. Um, but still, you know, it would have been, would have been nice to be asked. Just saying, guys. Jeez. Okay, time for this. Wait, what's supposed to happen? I'm. This is where we give this movie a score out of ten. Sam goes first. No, Andrew goes first. Sorry, my yep. my script was not in front of me. Yeah, I, I've already lost IMDb, so I don't know what it gives it. To, uh, IMDb gives I, this a surprising 5.9 out of 10. What? That's way too high uh, yeah. for anything uh, remotely this bad. I am going to give this a 2.4 out of 10. 2.4. Okay, Jason? I'm going to give it a 3.5, inch floppy disks out of 10. Nice. 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 Uh, Sam, uh, I'm going to give it a 2.58, uh, 2.58. I have, I have no, no funny things to <laughs> add to that. So well, this is a horrible movie. This see. is horrible. It, it, but this is one of those where 
I've enjoyed beating up this movie with you guys. Oh, because yeah. Because that's the only thing that has made this movie worthwhile <laughs> is to suffer through it with everybody else. So I appreciate that, guys. Totally agree. Absolutely agree. Uh, let's see. They were using Mac OS 7.0 and... Let's see. I can't, certainly can't give it a seven. Um, let's see. She goes through a hop in the thing and four. To the, uh, so seven divided by three. Is a, I'm going to give this movie a three and a half. I don't know why. That was weird. See, techno babble. <laughs> three and Thank a half. you for running through all that math, it's though. The, it's yeah. the number of inches that will be added to you if you use the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. That's true. <laughs> that's exactly right. That is true. That's that's proven science. Can't can't uh, deny that. So that gives our movie an average score of two point nine one four, yeah. and yeah, somehow that probably doesn't even still put it in the bottom ten of our of our listing, because um, because mm. we've seen some bad stuff. Actually, you know what? It yeah. uh, well, no, of last year I have the, the the one from last year handy, but yeah, no, it's a it's a bad movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, it puts it <laughs> squarely uh, at number nineteen ish. 1920. Yep. It's going to nestle right. right between Super Mario Brothers and Wing Commander. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ah, yeah. I like that placement. Yep. Would you have rather right. watch either one of those movies, Jason? I'm actually going to be covering those. When does this episode come out? When does this drop? In two days. Uh, then from the point that you're listening to this, next week I'm covering uh, 90s video game movies with Matt F. Bosler. Uh, and we're going to do, we, we binge movies on the show. Uh, so we binge five films. We five, do a, wow. Yeah, we do a, uh, a highly analytical review of the film. We're a deeply ridiculous podcast, and two of the movies on that list are Super Mario Brothers and Wing Commander. So, awesome. oh my gosh, nice. <laughs> awesome! Somehow we have segue automatically segued into that. That's perfect. Well, it is absolutely perfect. It yeah. drops Tuesday on all your favorite podcast apps. And where can they find your show more specifically, like on Twitter and or other podcasting apps? Yeah, we're on every podcast app under the sun, including ones I never signed up for. I continuously <laughs> get emails from, uh, uh, not Stitcher, what's the other one? It's like, uh, you, you I, there's another one out there that I've, I've Good pod? Spreaker. Oh, Spreaker. Spreaker. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know, Spreaker, okay. Um, but yeah, we're on all your favorite podcast apps, wherever you find podcasts. You can find us on uh, bingemovies.podbean.com. If you like, like the show, you want to support it, you can always go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash bingemovies. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at binge movies, letterbox.com slash binge movies. Uh, we rank and review movies to determine which ones are most worthy of preservation for all time, even beyond the end times. And our seasons culminate in a little thing we like to call last movie standing. It's me and a guest critic. We go through the season. A movie gets added to the short list. Another movie gets added to the guest list. At the end, two film critics have a nice, friendly, uh, fun, timed, rounded debate. And then uh, whoever wins that debate, according to our listeners, their movie gets added to our no copyright infringement intended vault to be preserved <laughs> and, and for all time, which we, we're building what we like to call the people's canon. We know what AFI says. We know what IMDb says. We know what the, uh, uh, the uh, podcast elites like cheap seats have to say about movies. <laughs> what do you have to say about movies? You get the power at binge movies. So uh, that's, that's my spiel. The loser of their debate, by the way, has his tank shaved with the lawnmower 4.0. Yeah. The loser of the debate, the movie gets eliminated from cinematic history. It will burn forever in the uh, lake of cinematic fire, and the loser goes with them. So we just eliminate <laughs> the guest and the film. It's like back in the Roman, not Roman, like the Egyptian times when, when the pharaoh dies, all of its possessions went with him. So... Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. In a way, you could say their taint's going to be shaved, but their whole body is going to burn. So it's fine. You know, <laughs> taints be damned. Yeah, whatever. You're, they'll be fine. Uh, that's awesome. That sounds great. And by the way, a real fun thing for Wing Commander. There's a kind of a neat little uh, pre Matrix Matrix Vision thing that goes on in that. It's kind of it's kind of neat. Little, oh, we uh, cover it. it yeah, it's covered. Oh, good. good. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Because uh, I was I was surprised. I forgot that that thing happened before that. If movie. you ever want to see coffee spill in bullet time, that's the film for you. Folks. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> it's, 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 I, I, let me just say, you know, we talked about a bad movie here. We're talking about bad movies next week. That's not what binge movies is. is. This season, we've covered uh, the FI top five. So we've covered, you know, Citizen Kane, Casablanca, et cetera, oh, wow. et cetera. We're going to end the season with uh, Stanley Kubrick. 
Uh, we've so we've had uh, we just did Don Bluth this past week, so we covered some Don Bluth. We had some tech issues there, so that that is not representative of our typical audio. If you hear it, and you're like, "Ah, eh, sounds a little." Mm. Uh, so that was a miracle it's even out there. But we cover the full spectrum of film, every genre, every style, from A list movies to Z list movies, everything in between. We like to say from the Francois Truffauts to the Tommy Wiseaus, we cover it all. Nice, awesome. Very cool, man. And uh, I've been trying to weasel my way on your show for a little while, and one of these days I will succeed. Maybe I need to bribe <laughs> you with some um, uh, manscaping or stickers or whatever else I can bribe you with. I don't have much. Um, but that's it. Lawnmower, one lawnmower 4.0 will do it because I don't want to put shade on the, the uh, fine folks at Manscape, but my lawnmower 4.0 broke. Oh, well. I don't tell you <laughs> something about my personal hygiene. That's uh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. But also, they're kind of expensive. So I, uh, yeah, we need. It's, uh, called, it's called deforestation. We need some more. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me on. You know, Sam, oh, it's you're been so much fun. Of course, Butch, um, Andrew, obviously beautiful. And uh, then there's you, Sean. Uh, you are the one that I think I engage with most on social media, and you and were kind enough to invite me here. And it was just, you're you're brilliant. You're a brilliant yeah. man. <laughs> it's a brilliant show. And in all seriousness, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, I, I I wasn't uh, cracking wise at the beginning to have this podcast and be going so long, and have listeners uh, around the world like you do, and continuously put out content. That's a pretty big achievement because uh, burnout in this thing we call podcasting is a very real thing, and uh, most people don't make it. So, congratulations, guys! Well, we're gluttons for punishment, but thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, it it just <laughs> literally comes down to no one's told us to stop. So, yeah, <laughs> no one told you to start either. Technically, so. <laughs> well, technically, Sam did. Um, yeah. He's actually kind of uh, honestly, he is the um, he was the motor behind this boat. Uh, and unlike the <laughs> Nissan, it, he actually got this thing off the ground because he said, you need to do this podcast. You figure it out. Tell us what to do, and we're going to do it. And after about – because, again, when we started, legit, there was like two websites on the Internet about how to start a podcast. Now there's yeah. you know, a thousand. A billion, but, yeah. There's you know, podcasts about how to start a podcast. There really, like, legitimately are. So – yeah. You know, we well, then just... let me let me take back every nice thing I said about everybody except for Sam, and then I redirect all that positive energy <laughs> towards you, Sam. You oh, are thank beautiful. You. Thank you, you are brilliant. And these <laughs> other guys are riding your coattails. Ah, you're you it's are true. not wrong. Yeah. Um, well, with all the money that I'm making on this podcast, I'm able to go on vacation like I am this week. Yeah. So, oh, beautiful. Oh, that's absolutely <laughs> true. So go check out his show, Ben Movies. Uh, podcast, right? Binge movies podcast. I'm literally looking at you, not you. I'm looking at. Thank your... you for being familiar with me. <laughs> Before <having> me... <laughs> yeah, binge movies, it's rankings, just, and reviews. Just binge movies. Binge just binge movies. movies. Binge the movies. word podcast does not appear. The word the does not appear. It's yeah. just you find binge, binge movies. movies on Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Pandora, Google Podcast, uh, or uh, whatever your third party podcast app is. Yep. You will find us. We're there. Uh, and yeah, just follow us on Twitter at binge movies and you, you find all of our links. We'd love to, love to have you come on over. Uh, we've got some great listeners over there, uh, just like you folks do here. And we, we, if you love movies, then you probably love binge movies. Well, and they love you in great Britain cause you're the number 76 film review podcast in great Britain. So that's pretty awesome. So good for you. I was 26. So they don't love me as much as they used to. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, <laughs> we have we have British listeners on this show, so you guys help him out here. Let's get him back up in the twenties, yep. man. That's awesome. Um, there you go. Yeah, honestly, I've been very blessed. At one it, just recently, we we were in the top top one hundred in film history, top one hundred in uh, film review, and and top one hundred in TV and film uh, in multiple international markets. So that's, that's awesome. all a hundred percent because of the great listeners that we have. So yeah. Um, all around the world, as you guys know, like what we do, oh, if yeah. you don't have listeners, man, it's no point. So, uh, yeah. thank you for having me. Thank you to your listeners for putting up with me. It was all in good fun. And I, I was honored. I was honored to be here. Absolutely. The honor was ours. Uh, the pleasure was ours and the humor was yours. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, I think I think Andrew is now going to get on Twitter just because of this. this is great. Uh, visit our website, cheapseatreviews.libsyn.com, and there you can go and find uh, links to all of our other stuff. Um, 
the the best thing you can do for us right now is to share and review. Leave us a review. Yep. Guys, listeners, I just want you to know how much I love podcasts and this show. In order to kind of help grow the show, I listened to 35 other podcasts because I said, hey, drop a link in the show, or drop your show link in our Twitter thing, and I will uh, listen and give you a review. 35 podcasts later, here we are. So please... Don't make me do that again. Leave us a review to help grow the show. Um, all the shows I listened to, they were all outstanding. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and so to, to close the show as, uh, as classy as I can, on behalf of Jason, Andrew, Sam, this is Sean saying thank you all so much for listening. And we'll see you next week for a movie to be determined. Cheap Seat Reviews.